Chapter 5 Losing Our Inheritance In our first three years of marriage, spent with me in the army, Kay and I weren't poor, but close to it. The military had a nasty reputation for being very stingy in the 70s. Married soldiers and their wives had to be very careful to be able to get by on what the army would allot. There were furnished barracks on the base for single guys, but those of us who were married were in a bit of a squeeze. Our furniture was mostly hand-me-downs and freebies. Most of the appliances, silverware and such, were wedding gifts. We had to be very frugal. Kay grew up in a high-rise luxury apartment in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. She was accustomed to the very best of everything. She was not prepared for this style of living. It did not suit her. One day, Kay discovered that I had a small stock portfolio that I had inherited from my beloved grandfather. I had been watching it grow for years. I wasn't hiding it from her or anything, but she acted as if I had been. She flew off the handle. We began the first of many nasty fights to follow. You mean to tell me that we could have bought beautiful things and are living with this crap? She snarled. You don't love me at all to make me live this way. I tried to explain to her the way my grandfather had told me when he left it to me. The portfolio should be set aside for much later in life. Compound interest would make it grow and grow like a giant oak, if left alone. It's set aside for retirement, or possibly for an emergency in desperate times, if they should come. These were not desperate times, I told her. They were pulling-in-your-belt times. This was a concept that Kay could not grasp. If you had money now, you spent it now. Right now. Kay's fighting skills were far superior to mine. She could go on and on for hours with a finger in your face, a better tone, and harsh words. I had never experienced this kind of exchange, except for seeing Elizabeth Taylor in Who is Afraid of Virginia Woolf. After several days arguing into screaming midnights, she wore me down. I cashed in my portfolio, and we went on a giddy two-week spending spree. Kay really showed me how to spend money like a rich person. It was quite an education. We started at the Ethan Allen store. Every piece is made with the most expensive, elegant woods, handcrafted with the finest finishes. Their fabrics are legendary. The chair she had to have was an impossibly comfortable, overstuffed Ethan Allen chair. It was priced about five times what I had imagined. Then she wanted to put custom fabric on it. Not just any fabric, but the special kind of fabric that they keep the sample book way up on the top shelf. It had a weave that was like a painting. There was a depth to the fabric. The fabric choice added another third to the price of the chair. I was learning quickly. That was 10% of the stock portfolio. My stomach was dropping. Now for a bookcase. I had never seen such fine workmanship in wood before. The joints were perfect. No screws or bolts or anything holding it together. I don't know how they did it. Another 10%. The smell of the carpet store we shopped at next was intoxicating. It was like traveling to a foreign country. The rug that Kay fell in love with was a work of art. I had to admit it was one of the most beautiful things I had ever seen. Another 10%. The rest of the money flowed through her hands till it was all gone. New clothes, some high-end pots and pans, I don't know where it all went, but my grandfather's legacy was all gone in three months.